well, my dad was always very interested in learning. Sometimes I was like afraid of asking my dad a question about what I, my homework or school. He would never give us an answer. It was the four huge books of encyclopedia. I'm like, dad, I really need to go and finish my homework. No, but you need to understand the whole concept. You don't just need to get the answer. You, so it, it was never easy. <laughs> I think I was always very interested in kind of how the body does all the magical things it does. My dad always used to talk to me about um, uh, how uh, how the body has all these defenses that takes care of, of you when you get sick. The white and the, the red armies and these are your white cells and your red cells and, and then uh, have the macrophages who are going to come and attack the invaders. I was like, okay, but how does it do it? I mean, just, I, I, I wasn't just satisfied with the, there is a white and the red army. Uh, obviously didn't realize that that was immunology at the time, but I just thought, I just want to learn more about that. So when I was doing uh, my uh, bachelor's degree, uh, one of my classes was uh, actually immunology and I started really learning what proper immunology was like. I had the opportunity to visit a lab uh, close to Mexico City in a, in a place called Cuernavaca. Um, and they offered me um, a master's, but it was mostly really biochemistry, working with scorpion venoms. The, the particular scorpion I was working with is a tiny, tiny scorpion uh, from the north of Mexico. Um, they, they are tiny and they are easy, easily uh, hideable. <laughs> they hide very easily and they, they live in the desert. That's one of the reasons we were trying to, to potentially create a vaccine so that the people that are working in the, in the fields or anybody who is not close to a, um, a hospital when they could immediately get an antivenom, uh, if they don't get it on time, it could be deadly. And so if you were able to prime your immune system with a vaccine, then that could actually prevent that. The problem was that I was working with the portion of the protein that didn't elicit an immune response and I felt like my project failed. That's the interesting thing with science. You do a lot of, uh, a, I think a lot of the experiments are uh, yield negative results or data that doesn't, um, is not what you expected originally. And we all feel like, well, all this work is for nothing. And actually it's not true because that uh, already that piece of research help uh, provide another piece of the puzzle. You never finish learning. Um, obviously, science is constantly moving. And I think this is incredible that we can actually predict and potentially save a life with a reagent called an antibody and that we are actually, that we get to make them. We don't get to make the diagnostic product, but we get to make thousands of these products that potentially could help a scientist in a, in a lab somewhere could potentially identify a new cure for uh, Alzheimer's. We are supporting people that are doing research in cancer, epigenetics, basic immunology, basic biology, plant biology, fish biology. We know of a lot of the, the molecules that, come, that make a neuron, but there are always things that we don't know. Uh, with the reagents we can make, you can visualize a neuron in multicolor and uh, with, the, with the help of great um, uh, microscopes, you, you get a glimpse of something that you actually have in, in your brain and that um, potentially we have never seen before. We are actually providing a lot of the building blocks to help um, science move faster. The contribution and the the reach of these products is huge. Whenever we release something, it's going to be doing what it should be doing the first time and every single time. So my job is to make sure that we continue keeping that quality uh, on those products and, and that we don't deviate from that. I read a quote from one of our partners that uh, say, your uh, rabbit monoclonals rock they are really the best. And that is really great.